Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus, here to walk you through our September 2017 release. Let's take a look. This month's headline feature is First Class Java Support. I think this is super exciting because it enables teams building apps with the Java platform to deploy their applications in a safe, reliable, and repeatable way. We're including support to deploy to Tomcat, Red Hat, JBoss EAP, and Wildfly application servers. You can read more about this at octopus.com slash docs. Now, I'd like to highlight how easy it is to deploy a Java web app with Octopus 3.17. So I have a brand new Octopus instance, and I've created a single project and two environments. If we take a look at those environments, I have a single Ubuntu box that is in both a test and a production environment. And if we take a quick look at the Ubuntu box, it's a virtual machine, it's brand new, it only has Java and Tomcat on it. So I just bring up Firefox, I have a brand new clean uh, Tomcat instance. So I'll just minimize this and head back to Octopus and we'll take a look at our project. It's called Timeleaf Demo and it's a very simple Spring MBC application that uses the Timeleaf template engine. And if you're not familiar with this, if you go to spring.io and look at the Spring MVC guide, you can learn a little bit more about that. And so back in Octopus, I've got my project, but I haven't defined my deployment process. So if we go into that and add our first step, Octopus has a lot of built-in steps and we've added a bunch of new ones to add Java support for all the different application servers. But in this case, I only care about Tomcat so I'll just filter for that, and I'm going to select the Deploy to Tomcat via the Application Manager step. Click Add Step. Now I'll name this Deploy Website, and we're going to deploy to all the deployment targets with the Tomcat role. And I've already uploaded uh, the package for this application, and I know it's called Time Leaf Demo, so I'll just select that. Now, for the Tomcat deployment, the context path, I'm going to select uh, a variable called Tomcat context path. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But you could uh, fill this in manually if you wanted as well. I'm going to clear the deployment version because I'm not uh, taking part in parallel deployments. And then I'll just uh, specify my Tomcat server details. So because I'm on, on a virtual machine, localhost is fine. And I'm just specifying the user and the password. And I will be deploying in a started state. Now I'm also going to turn on substitute variables in files. And I'm going to do variable re replacement for any variables that I've defined in my application.properties file. And this is the relevant configuration file because it's a Spring MVC application. And yours may vary depending on the, the type of apps you're building. So now that's it, and if I just click Save, my deployment process is complete. If we head over to the variables, I'll highlight that Tomcat context path variable. And I created that because I'm deploying to a single server. So I want a different context path depending on if I'm deploying to uh, test or production. And then I also have a single, single variable, and this one's called environment, just with a little message. Uh, that'll be displayed when I deploy, depending on if I've deployed to the test or the production environment. Just shows that as I deploy to different environments, I can have variable scoped and Octopus will make those changes for me. Now I'm going to go and create a release and we'll call it 1.0 and we'll just say first release. Save that and we're going to deploy that to test. So I'll click deploy now. And so this will acquire the package and the actual step is going to do everything required to deploy it to Tomcat. So I'll just give it a second. And there it's complete. So if I jump to the Tomcat web application manager and just refresh, we can now see that the test time leaf app has been deployed. If I take a quick look, it's very simple and you can see the environment uh, that has been set and uses the, the variable that I wanted. If we jump back and we promote that to production, just take a minute. 
and then head back to the Tomcat Web Application Manager, we can now see the production time leaf app has been deployed. If we open that as well, you can see that it has production, Java is awesome. If we head back to Octopus and take a look at our dashboard, we can see that we've successfully deployed our web application twice, and it really couldn't be easier. Octopus has taken care of everything needed to deploy safely and reliably, and it even changes our variables, our configuration values, as we deploy through environments, and it's really, really easy. So this is a great step forward for anybody deploying Java apps or doing it in mixed environments with mixed technologies. Next up, I'd like to highlight our new Swagger support for the Octopus API. Octopus is an API-first application, so anything you can do via our web portal or command line tools, you can do via our REST API. Now, we've added Swagger support, so it's more discoverable and easier to work with. If you're not familiar with Swagger, it's a way of describing an API, the operations, the resources, in a human and machine-readable way. And a really nice part of that is that you get some really nice tooling that goes along with that. So if you look at any Octopus instance and you now type Swagger UI, you get a really nice front end to be able to discover, search, and interact with the Octopus Server API. So if I want to find out specific project or release details, I can search through the Swagger UI and interact with the API to find the information I want. For example, if I just want to find some project information and I can find all the endpoints related to projects and even try them. So this is the slash API projects all endpoint and it lists the name and ID of all projects in the current Octopus in, uh, instance. So if I just try that and execute it, it one tells me the command line arguments to be able to execute that again. It also gives me the full response details, including all the JSON related information and the headers. This is extremely valuable and it's a lot easier than it used to be. So we're very happy to have added Swagger support in this release. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to try something mentioned in this video, head over to octopus.com/downloads and grab the latest release. See you next month and happy deployments.